Hello again, this is Joe Gilder from HomestudioCorner.com, and today I want to take just a minute or two to talk about acoustic treatment. Uh, this is something that, if you're just starting out, it may be the last thing that's on your mind for your home studio, but it's something you should definitely consider. I took way too long to acoustically treat my studio, and it made a huge difference, and I wish I had done it a lot sooner. So let's just talk about it briefly, and hopefully I can get you moving in the right direction. So first question, why do you need acoustic treatment? Well, the first thing is your room is lying to you. Uh, it, imagine your room is a giant EQ, and whatever comes out of your speakers, uh, before it hits your ears, those sounds are bouncing around the room, and they come back, and they hit your ears after they've been severely affected in some cases. So the room itself is causing some frequencies to be boosted, some to be cut, and it's acting like an EQ for your signal. Like Sometimes I call it the Grand Canyon EQ, um, because it's very possible that the EQ curve that your room is introducing into your signal could look something like this. Now, this is just an example. I'm, I'm not an acoustician. I don't have a big readout for you to look at as far as what uh, an actual room frequency response is. But I can tell you that in, in some rooms, it's very reasonable to expect that some low frequencies, like here at 125, 125 hertz, will get cut severely because of the shape of the room and the way that those frequencies interact in the room, it causes a big dip there. It can also cause uh, boosts at different frequencies. So you're basically going to listen to your audio through this sort of an EQ. And what happens is you mix it, it sounds pretty good in your room, and uh, everything sounds balanced, especially in this area. Then you take it out to your car, and then suddenly all you hear is 125 hertz, which is that boomy, bassy sound. And you wonder why it sounded great in my room, but now it sounds horrible in the car or in the stereo or anywhere else. That's because your room was lying to you and was taking out all those frequencies, and they all those frequencies are still in your mix, you just couldn't hear them. So when you listen on a different system that doesn't have this big cut at 125 hertz, suddenly you're hearing those frequencies that were there all along. So it's not that the other rooms added those frequencies, it's that your room took them out, and now you have to deal with that. And in essence, like I said, the room is lying to you. You're not hearing an accurate, an accurate representation of what's coming out of your speakers. You're hearing it after it's been affected. So let's talk about real quickly the types of acoustic treatment. Now, I'm not an expert in acoustic treatment. I don't, I don't build acoustic treatment. I usually just buy it. Um, and there's lots of different ways to go. I'm going to talk about just three basic types of acoustic treatment. And this is certainly not exhaustive, but if you're a beginner especially, then this is a great starting point for you and will make a big improvement in your mixes uh, if, if all you do is these three things. So the first thing is absorption. This is basically the studio foam that you see in most studios. It's, it's fairly thick, and it usually is only effective at the high frequencies. So when you clap your hands in a room and you hear that flutter echo, the, the high frequency foam is going to handle that and take care of it. Now, another type of absorption is what's called broadband absorption. This is usually, it's, it's in the same realm as foam, but it's usually a much thicker material, uh, usually has some weight and some mass to it, and it can absorb the high frequencies, but also it absorbs down into the mid-range and a little bit lower frequencies. So whereas foam usually only handles the highs, broadband absorption, something that's a little bit thicker, will handle uh, the highs and also some of the mids. And then for low frequencies, oh, sorry, before that, we have diffusion. Diffusion, instead of absorbing the sound, actually spreads it out. So this can be helpful if your room is very dead and you want it to sound a little more alive. You can put up some diffusers. And uh, finally, there's bass traps. Low frequencies are usually the hardest uh, frequency range to handle. And what bass traps do, they usually go in the corners, and they're very massive. They include just a lot of material, and they help absorb bass frequencies especially the buildup of frequencies, and it helps to even out the bass response in your room. It's a pretty cool thing, and um, they work really well. I found that when I use bass traps, usually the bass response of the room gets better, and I hear more bass as a result of the bass traps, which is fairly interesting. So what are some examples of acoustic treatment? Well, let's uh, jump over to the interwebs, and I will show you. Okay, here's Sweetwater's website. They are a sponsor of Home Studio Corner. Uh, the first thing we talked about was Studio Foam. So here's an example. RLX makes these. They're one foot by one foot, uh, and they make them anywhere from two to four inches thick. And there's nothing super 
high tech about these. Um, they just absorb the high frequencies, like I said. So if you do nothing else, this is a good option for you. Uh, another thing here is these are, as you can see here, broadband absorbers. They're a little thicker, they stand out from the wall a little more, and those will absorb the highs and also a little bit of the mids because they do stand out from the wall a little bit. Next thing we have here is bass traps. These are uh, the RLX Leonard's. These are actually what I have in my studio, and they go in the corner, and as you can see, I don't know if you can tell from the picture, but these are really big. Um, this area here is a foot long by a foot long so it sits in the corner of your room and helps to absorb a lot of the low frequencies now it's not perfect but it can take that EQ we looked at over in the other slide instead of it being a huge dip here by treating the the room with bass traps it can maybe make the EQ a little bit lower so it's not quite as dramatic and anything you can do to help uh, is a big deal so let's go back over to the picture here the other thing I talked about was diffusers and those are simply, they can look all sorts of shapes and sizes. All of these here are different types of diffusers. So they can look like this, like this. They're basically just hard surfaces that help the sound bounce around the room. Now, I have not installed diffusers in my room. I don't know if I need them per se. Possibly do. But if you have a room that sounds really dead and needs a little more life to it, and you need the sound to bounce around a little bit without going out of control, diffusers are a good way to go. So again, thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful, got you at least starting to think about acoustic treatment. And again, my name is Joe Gilder with HomestudioCorner.com, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.